Ja, vielen Dank. Vielen Dank nochmal auch an Sie und an die Einladung hier vorzutragen. Ich äh, wurde gebeten, einmal den äh, German Ground Motion Service vorzustellen und den European Ground Motion Service. Ich werde das Ganze auch auf Englisch halten, äh, da auch der Titel auf Englisch war. Und äh, ja, dann würde ich gerne beginnen. Ich kann das nicht selbst steuern jetzt. Danke. Ja, German Ground Motion Service. Uh, I would like to give a short um, introduction on the motivation and we'll talk about the implementation process, um, use case and uh, short conclusions before then in the second part I will talk quickly about and give an overview on the European Ground Motion Service. Next to folio, bitte. Uh, the motivation to start the discussion on a German ground motion service was um, actually the geology, the German geology. We had uh, several uh, geological uh, situations and also use, using of the geological underground, which uh, are known to cause the ground deformation, uh, first of all mining, soft soils in the, in the coastal areas, mainly in the north, landslides and uh, subrosion caused by salt, do salt domes and carbonate, uh, carbonate outcrops. And uh, so this was the, the in, in initiative to discuss about how can we uh, control or how can we give an, an overview also for planning, etc of uh, ground deformations. Next slide, please. So uh, we started a discussion and uh, about uh, what, what can be done. It was also already explained by, by, the, um, um, by the other presenters. We had the starting point with the Copernicus mission. So we decided to start with a uh, Sentinel-1 PSI product. On the right hand side you can see the German uh, Germany with the mainly everything is green which is good and we have also uh, areas if you zoom in which are which are uh, showing uh, subsidence etc but also areas with uh, uplift so what we did we had the, the descending and ascending stacks over Germany and uh, we had the uh, And we had uh, from the user side and from also several workshop, workshops we initiated in the, in the beginning of the, of the implementation process, the, men, the, the demand to have a calibrated product. So we did the calibration of the INSAR, INSAR product On, G Germ on GPS stations, uh, on the one hand, on the national GPS stations, but also on the federal GPS stations, uh, on the, the SAPO stations. You can see the verification of the PSI results with the GNSS stations, which were not used for the calibration, and we have a very good uh, co um, correlation with the, with the product. Next slide, please. So uh, further on, the topic of product dissemination, which was, was also already mentioned by the by the um, by my former presenter. Uh, we decided from the start to to, uh, to create um, a web GIS to disseminate the product with a with a complete. Uh, resolution, so we have full resolution and, 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 and full data set and uh, at, actually we have online since um, 20, we had uh, online since November 2019 and we have had the last update in September 2020. The contender uh, right now, PSI, in the product 2014 to 2019 ascending and descending in full resolution uh, mean velocities and time series in line of sight coherence acquisition geometry stack id etc so all the attributes can be downloaded and of course the background maps 
um, visualization on in the website directly can be uh, directed by the user of course download various mean velocity coherence and time series plots directly on screen next slide please so uh, and also the next one already uh, use case mining uh, on the left hand side uh, psi ascending on the right hand side a map of the mineral resources of germany which can be uh, downloaded and uh, directed by the user himself next slide please uh, use case groundwater management for lignite open pit mining uh, here you can see on, the, on the, the ascending and the descending tracks. So the background is in Hambach. Lowering of the groundwater for lignite open pit mining leads to large surface deformation. So in red is shown the, the, the subsidence rates. And uh, what we are now um, cre creating, or what we are now going to implement in the next phase of the WebGIS is seen in the next slide. So we will have the we will have the decomposition of the, two, the, uh, the D, 2D motion decomposition showing vertical deformation and east-west deformation. And you can see in this slide that the vertical velocity and the east-west velocity are important for the interpretation of these uh, and also for the investigation of the processes. Um, as to the fact that we have, uh, even in an area where we have mainly subsidences, we have uh, great effects of vertical and east-west deformation. And the superposition, superposition with the tectonic faults shows that the eastern part of the subsidence is confined by faults. Next slide, please. So uh, concluding the ground motion service Germany, where are we now? We have Sentinel-1 PSI ascending and descending, descending line of sight velocities and time series available. We have interactive functions. The product download uh, is available. The web map service was requested by governmental and industrial users, and um, it will be available in early 2021. So we are now further on developing the WebGIS uh, interfaces and the um, web map service, down, uh, service component. And we are planning to update the Sentinel-1 PSI product once a year. So the next slide, please. European Ground Motion Service. Uh, we started the discussion, as, as many of you will know, in 2017. And the vision at that time was to have a ground motion data based on Copernicus Sentinel-1 for the Copernicus particip participating states, as we saw that this important component was missing in the Copernicus services portfolio. Next slide, please. So the main, the important steps to give you the background. We had the uh, first supranational user workshop, uh, and even at the at the first meeting, which was a meeting, you know, to bring together interested groups, etc. We have already had 80 participants uh, coming from 16 countries in Hanover. Then we uh, this, we went with this idea to the Copernicus User Forum. And the Commission invited Germany to lead the proposal process for the ground motion according to the procedures. So we have taken the initiative and set up the task force on supranational ground motion service. All the member states were asked to send members and uh, interest groups. So it was um, the task force is, uh, is a mix of uh, industry, uh, research institutions, national authorities, uh, federal authorities, etc., and, and the research. We had the first task force meeting in task force meeting then in March 2017, and already in um, September 2017, the white paper was approved by the task force and the task force interest group and was delivered uh, to the European Commission for the further decision. The next slide, please. The, the 
next step was that it was um, uptaken in the work program by the Commission. And uh, in October 2017, the Copernicus User Forum recommended the European Ground Motion Service at that stage still UGMS for immediate realization in the Copernicus portfolio. And the Commission authorized in the next step the European Environmental Agency as entrusted entity environment with the implementation of the from that time on called EGMS. Next slide, please. So the proposed products um, are uh, which were which were laid down in the white paper, which are not 100% uh, what is going to realized as the um, the uh, tender process uh, was um, was uh, was opened this year. So we propose to have uh, three level products, three to four level products. The first one, Copernicus Sentinel Single Loop Complex Data, which is the input data only, not an EGMS product. Level 2A, an intermediate product. And I would like to state that it's uh, the product will be delivered for individual and consistent frames. So it's not, it's just image stacks and it will be, um, as, as we think mainly for an expert user group and the main level the main products are level 2b and 3 so we have uh, integration of the level 2 into a standardized reference frame this is what you see in the in the, in the, in the german ground motion service and also in others and using external information that such as a gns as network measurement and mosaic as i stated with the during my presentation of the German ground motion service, we saw that this is an um, important um, question and it's an important recommendation coming out of the user community. And for the product integration and mosaicing best geodetic practices will be used and the European um, UREF network, the geodetic network is proposed for georeferencing as a, a uh, European product and level three we have east west and up down deformation as I did show for the Hambach example which is produced by combining level 2b data stemming from ascending and descending orbits the last slide please which is giving you the the, oh, the <laughs> I've still two more the target users Direct users are geological and geodetic surveys, public authorities and academia. We can switch to the next slide. And um, giving that the, okay, <laughs> still the last. Um, so you see the, the schedule for the European ground motion service as presented by uh, EA, by Henrik uh, Steen Andersen in October 21 at the EGMS workshop. We had the ramp up. We have the ramp up phase in January. Uh, the production of the baseline product in 2021. Uh, we have, will have data including December 2020. So in December 2021, the the um, baseline product should be ready. And then we also go for an annual update date for the European Ground Motion Service. The independent product validation is starting as soon as we have the first uh, products and uh, user uptake and engagement as the uh, first workshop uh, did show uh, already started. So this is an ongoing um, process. Further information you might see on the on the website below. So all the documentations, white paper, etc. Also the the uh, documentation on the on the production scheme etc are online up to be found online on this site thank you very much